Hi, my name is Bloodfish and welcome to the new redstone video. As you can see from the background, this is not your average circuitry based redstone video, but instead I will be focusing on explaining different redstone contraptions and how they can be used in survival and in general. So let's get started. The first contraption features piston feed tapes. Now if you think that these piston feed tapes aren't very useful, I beg to differ because you can see the amount of examples I'm going to be providing that these piston feed tapes are actually very useful. In the first example, you can see that this piston feed tape is acting as an advanced version of a block swapper. So you can see that I'm storing all of my interactive blocks over here, but of course, like provided they can be moved. So like movable blocks like crafting tables, looms, smithing tables, or cartography tables. Of course, you can't stick like a furnace inside because you can't move a furnace. Another use for these piston feed tapes are as like some sort of archway into your base. So if you were to tile this a few times, like add more piston feed tapes to the side of this, you're, and also if you like sync these up then you may get a really cool swirling effect if you know what I mean so like yeah a swirling effect <laughs> anyways on to the second example the second example features this piston feed tape acting as an obstacle in a parkour course so just like a moving platform you jump over these obstacles and we reach like the next platform which is pretty cool now th something to mention here is that these slime blocks have to be alternating with the like glazed terracotta if you use another block then like the slime blocks would stick to that other block and so it won't work so you have to use uh, glazed terracotta in this situation and of course you don't just have to bolt this uh, horizontally you can also bolt, bolt this vertically so as you run by you just have to dodge these slime uh, block pillars and then for the third example we have the piston feed tape acting as a combination lock this combination lock has two different piston feed tapes this one is called the brain of the circuit, and this is the color display circuit. Now, the cauldron, which will be detected by the comparator, is corresponding to the red color wool. So you can just flick this to the red wool, and so the cauldron, the comparator will detect the cauldron, and so we'll send a signal to the door, and thus opening it. And of course, you can connect these, com like these, um, to an AND gate. So like, so different modules, more modules, so you can connect all of those into an AND gate. So you have to get the correct combination on all like the modules for this door to activate and you can also expand this so you can fit more colors for a more complex system. The fourth example features the piston feed tape as a moving background. It's not practical at all but I guess it could be cool if you plan to film something in survival in Minecraft. Now, of course you can make this more immersive by like extending this a few blocks taller or changing your field of vision so it just works like that. Immersive. Although like the bike isn't moving. <laughs> Anyways, uh, there's something I'd like to show you here is that you can see that I have a flat surface here. There are no pistons sticking out, and this is because of the like I used a sticky piston instead of a normal piston. So if you look at these diagrams over here, you would expect a piston to be on all four sides, pushing the blocks around in a cycle. However, you can like switch this piston out with a sticky piston, which will pull the block instead of push it. But this is only like this only works if you have a piston feed tape that is two blocks wide, like that. So because like, it can't pull blocks from here. Yeah, and then basically if you master these piston feed tapes, you'll be able to master the art of transporting blocks around. So basically this can be used for cobblestone generators if you were to tra like transport blocks to a more safer place where it can be blown up without destroying the redstone. So like this, it just moves the blocks around. Yeah. And then another wacky use of these piston feed tapes to be used as an elevator in a one block tall base. It's a very interesting concept, I must say. And yeah, it's very fun to use too. Like it's not as complex as a flag machine, but it's like, it just looks so good like that. And so yeah, different uses for the piston feed tape. For the second contraption, we have flying machines. If I were to describe these flying machines with a phrase, I would call them the movable machines of Minecraft. Yay, alliteration. Uh, but why? Well, because you can build so many different machines with different purposes. For example, uh, TNT tunnel bores, uh, actual planes you can ride on, and also automatic bridge builders using ice and lava to make basalt. So here are a few more examples. As mentioned, you can make flying machines to make transport, horizontally or vertically. So this is your basic horizontal flying machine, which you can use to transport yourself across large gaps. For example, the gap between the center end island and also the large end island, if you want to get elytras before beating the ender dragon, so just use this to transport yourself, provided that the ender dragon doesn't kill you first by knocking you off into the void and you can lose all your stuff. Yeah, and apart from like going 
for, uh, horizontally, you can also use it to go vertically. So this is just another vertically uh, machine, flying machine, which can be used as like an elevator in a modern build, which I believe is pretty cool. It's like having a machinery mod in vanilla Minecraft without like the mod, of course. Yeah, it'll look pretty cool. And apart from like being used in transport, you can also use these in farms, like a more survival sense. So for example, this is just a flying slime block machine to harvest uh, different crops, such as sugarcane, uh, bamboo, and also chorus plants, which uh, you might need to regrow because, like replant, because you can't regrow them with the stems, which is pretty inconvenient. But who really uses chorus plants anyways, apart from like end mods, which look pretty cool, I, I have to admit. But yeah, apart from using them in crop farms, you can also use them in mob farms. So for mob farms, you know there are two different designs. One uh, with the water pushing mechanic, which pushes the mobs off the platform, and also a slime block uh, pusher. So why are slime block pushers a lot better than these water based pushing mechanics? One, if you're in the nether, then like these are automatically ruled out because you can't put water in the nether. And two, it's about spawning spaces. So for this platform, there's always a set amount of time where mobs cannot spawn on the platform because it's being waterlogged. I mean, not waterlogged, but like full of water. So mobs cannot spawn. However, with a slime block machine, there's always a set amount of time where mobs can spawn, like, sorry, area that mobs can spawn. So like, you can, like the mobs can spawn here or here because like the flying machine only takes up this, this amount of space. It's not that much, so yeah. Maximizes your spawning potential. And finally, the arguably the most useful use for these flying machines as TNT dupers. So as mentioned, TNT tunnel bores, you have to use uh, TNT dupers to automatically create TNT, of course. We can also use these and hook up, hook them up with like a horizontally flying machine to make a perimeter as they like fly back and forth or to use them to harass your friends and destroy their builds because you just want to prank them. Yeah, uh, of course I would prefer the latter to have prank your friends, but it's not really fun being the victim. But yeah, anyways, uh, just different uses for flying machines. Up next, we have a piston door. Now, piston doors are not very useful in survival because they literally don't do anything apart from give you a really cool entrance into your base. However, like, I have made a list so you can, like, take some inspiration from it. So, like, if you want to build some of these because these are kind of hard to build. Anyways, the first example features a piston door. This is called a 2x2 flush piston door. It's flush because, like, it's flush with the wall. You can't see it like that. It's, like, smooth. And also, like, the redstone's rather easy to build. So, like, you can see it's just, like, a few pieces of redstone, some repeaters, and also some pistons, just like that. And then we have a 3x3 piston door. This is my own design. It's not very good. It's not very compact. Uh, just if you want a good 3x3 piston door, just go onto the internet and find one. I'm not very good at these. But yeah, it's, this is fast, so I'm just demonstrating this to you. And then we have a, another door which could only be possible in 1.15 because of the addition of honey blocks. Now we can make like infinitely tileable, so like infinitely tileable like more modules, or like infinitely high uh, slime. A flying machine piston doors which yeah pretty cool now of course like you can then go up and down just like that but like if you think that these are all too hard then you can always like go to like the simplest option just like a two by two door which can be activated on both sides and activate instantly which honestly this is the best p door or entrance out of all I've shown so far but like these don't always have to be doors they can also be stairs so as you can see from this, this looks like some really cool decoration. However, if you flip this lever, then like it turns into a set of stairs, which you can go up and down. So yeah, different like entrances you can use in your Minecraft bases. For the fourth contraption, we have a cobblestone generator. And as the name suggests, this generates cobblestone. Now cobblestone can be used as a raw material, maybe some sort of scaffolding, although we do have a scaffolding block in Minecraft, but it is gravity affected. So it's like gra it seems that like cobblestone is a much more viable alternative to actual scaffolding blocks. But yeah, uh, this can also be used for building, but I don't exactly recommend using this for building because it's very ugly, just like me. Uh, so like maybe only use this for um, stone-based builds, like for like more texture. But it's also a shame that you can't just like erase the ugliness by using a splash potion of invisibility, unlike how it works on me. But yeah, anyways, uh, this is your most basic version of a cobblestone generator. So you just have like a water source around seven to eight blocks um, away from a lava source, so it can just like automatically generate uh, cobblestone like that, so you can harvest it. So of course you can automate this process by like flicking this lever and hooking this cobble generator up with a TNT duper. So 
So just do PNT, and so it just breaks the cobblestone. And of course, you can also like hook this up with a uh, hopper minecart below to like collect the copper, uh, sorry, a cobble that has been dropped from the TNT. Apart from this, you can also use uh, t uh, cobblestone generators in mini games. So if you have heard of the mini games Flee, so it's a game where like you use efficiency five pickaxes and haste two beacons to uh, fight with your friends basically. <laughs> Like you're on a stone platform and you just want to break like the platform beneath your friend and so like they fall down and if your opponent falls you win like that so if you finish your split from tournament or something you can always like press the lever like click the lever and the arena will always be regenerated just like that very simple although it's not very efficient i'm not very good at building these cold generators just if you want to find a good designs go onto the internet i'm not good at these anyways uh speaking of regeneratable walls we also have another regeneratable wall so for example when someone tries to blow up your walls cough cough you can shoot me in my trap room builds and uh, like they try to blow it up like this you can always just like fix the problem like you can see there's a large hole you can fix this by flicking the lever and so like the wall will be regenerated back just like this you can see that the cobblestone generator can actually fix a lot of things but it can't fix my school grades because they're really bad <laughs> Anyways, uh, one last thing to mention about cobble generators, one last use for them, as a hidden activation device. So just break this piece of stone, and this piece of stone will also will be regenerated back, replaced, or and also like generate a redstone pulse, which you can use to maybe open up some sort of hidden activate, like a hidden base, maybe like this down here. You just drop down like that, so which is pretty useful in my opinion. So yeah, different uses for the cobblestone generator. For the last contraption, uh, we have minecarts. Uh, you might not think this is a contraption, but just, I uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm running out of ideas. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, minecarts are very useful in my opinion because they can be used for short distance transport, like conveniently. So, for example, from like another portal to another portal, maybe like from your base to like a mine shaft, like that, like just like short distance travel. You don't need to like build a really massive, maybe a flying machine to go there, or like you don't have the elytra over. So like this is just a very convenient way of transport. Anyways, we have different uses for these minecarts. So, for example, you can use this to pick up villagers without the hassle of like just trying to transport them somewhere like that. So yeah, like this is the simple system you need to build. Yeah, and then like you can also use this as a clock, although it's not exactly the most conventional way to make one. This is also another method to use minecarts. I am very pressed for ideas here. You can also use this as like a store, like a collection, automatic collection using hopper minecarts attached to another clock here. So yeah, uh, this will automatically move when I like try and bone meal this flower farm, like that. So it will like collect all the drops. Although I have tile drops turned off right now, so yeah, you get the idea. Just like all the items will be down in this chest. So yeah, like the f different uses for the minecarts. So there we have it. This has been a presentation on the different uses of different contraptions in survival or in general. I hope you enjoyed it. Maybe learned something. And thank you for all your support in like the past five months uh it has been a tedious process of editing videos because yeah I underestimated like how youtubers work but anyways uh this is bloodfish signing off i'll see you in the near future goodbye <laughs>